spawned by the Russian Revolution of 1917. And that's, that's gone now. One of the last things that Ernest Mandel told me was, you know, he said that generation, he said that historical period is over, and there's, a, there's going to have to be a new period. And that's, I think, where you have to situate the, uh, the, you know, the NPA in that. That the mass working class parties, uh, certainly in Europe at any rate, uh, had been, you know, communist parties, social, socialist or social democratic parties, uh, some mode or another that were related to, you know, the events of 1917. And uh, that's no longer the case. That's no longer the case. And so there has to be some kind of a new mode that's more expressive of this, uh, this situation. I think that's an effort. That's a, an effort of what the NPA is about. There were efforts in England which failed, as you well know. The alliance respect failed miserably, um, and that is, and so it, it's, it's something that can't be replicated automatically here, there, or uh, anywhere else. In, in the United States, we have a problem, and uh, I've, I've seen this myself. Uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time now up in Wisconsin, in, in my hometown, and you do see that working class anger that you talk about. But it does, it's retracted in many instances through this uh, preposterous Tea Party type stuff, you know. It, it's, it's, it's really, you, 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 it's hard to engage these people. People that I grew up with, my high school classmates, you know, are still the working class, never left. And, uh, you know, the, the, working, the anger is there, the anger is there, but it takes the wrong form through the Tea Party there anti-immigrant, anti-Mexican postures, and just all the wrong things. Because there is no, nothing here in the United States like the NPA, so to speak, of, uh, at all. I mean, even Ron Paul, the congressman from, uh, from Texas, recognizes that. You know, he regrets the way he's kind of the founder of the Tea Party movement. He's a libertarian. He, he, he rules the way that the, when that the Tea Parties were taken over and bankrolled by the capitalist uh, corporate uh, uh, funders and how how far to the right that it's moved where it doesn't have any liberatory aspect to it at all. Uh, but you pose good questions and, and that, those are questions that all of us are going to have to engage. I think on this generational thing, if I could just add, add a little bit to that, I think that's a very important point. I think one of the reasons why the League was so effective as a revolutionary organization, its leadership was so good is because of their connection with the, the with, with their elders, with the Pierre Frank group, with the with with the, the, the older Trotskyists who had gone through uh, the struggles in the 20s and the 30s and the occupation and the like, who knew firsthand the Nazi barbarism and, and, the, and, the, and the Stalinist debacle, and they were able to avoid a lot, and they were able to stand on their shoulders. Uh, what, when I was at International Viewpoint and I'd go to these uh, the press points for, um, for the, uh, the secretary or the, um, the secretary, and uh, you saw the generations there too. There was Ernest and Livio, and then there was the 68ers. Um, and um, they were still learning from, from Livio and, and Mandel. I remember in the 1990s, Mandel would sometimes, sometimes Ben Said and Jeanette and, and uh, Jabert would get a little, uh, they wanted to move their meeting on because Ernest kept talking about how important it was to go back to Trotsky's writings of the early 20s. Well, I think in the same way, uh, Kravine and Ben Said understood they had to do the same thing. That the Bezan Sano is probably 32 or 34 years old. He was born after 1968. The leadership of the NPA is largely younger militants. But they didn't come from nowhere, or, and if they did come from nowhere, they're being schooled um, by, um, by, by, by their elders. I'm going to put it in that way. These, these generations kind of overlap, and I think that's very, very important uh, that that's not lost. Just to follow up, and then I'll call for this gentleman. Uh, I think he's absolutely right on that. And, and, and sorry. And we'll see that, uh, that uh, historically there has been that continuity. That uh, you know the uh, the people who uh, who um, you know really formed the uh, IWW and that many of their mentors had been very very young members of the Knights of Labor, you know going way back. So you had that kind of thing. 
The same thing with the Communist Party. You know, the, many of those people have been young members of the IWW. And uh, certainly, the, okay. yeah, right, certainly the, ra the radicalization of the 1960s here and globally, as Keith has pointed out, you know, it did have that, uh, that yeast, that leaven, you know, of uh, people who had been uh, from an early period radicalized in the 1930s and uh, so on and so forth. So that is, uh, you know, absolutely. Well, well, I I also share the sentiment uh, about the importance of the living tradition of the left, such as it is here. Uh, nonetheless, I I have to say I deplore the emphasis by too many left-wing historians on the history of the left, and I have to say that I think we maybe now ambiguously felt death of the Soviet Union, if disaster that it was, it represented something that, if, if nothing else, a ghost that the, our state had to look over its shoulder at. Uh, now with that gone, uh, maybe people will start looking at, say, not to get into exceptionalism, but what's specific about, say, U.S. history? and then compare it to other places, and particularly the question of race. Uh, you mentioned that uh, the, com what the Communist Party has lost, Le Pen has gained. Isn't that an interesting switch, despite your talking about militants having a different kind of trajectory? When it comes to the base, it's very different. Well, um, you know, I don't want to go into a history lesson, but gee, look at the U.S. Uh, how different are we now? Uh, that uh, the that that working class anger here. Uh, and you look at David Lodeger, and he will tell you that what constitutes working class meant white, literally. That that was the same historical construction. Wages of whiteness is the book that people have a lot to learn from, I believe. Well, it's no surprise then that when they get, when working people get totally turned out, they uh, go back to their whiteness because that's at the root of their culture of being workers in the U.S. And increasingly, uh, I'm saying it looks like it's going to be true in Europe too, uh, with uh, the onset of immigration from the third world over the last 30 or 40 years. So um, I just hope people, I, it seems to me, too many leftists have wished this away. Or said, well, yeah, yeah, sure, but. And I don't think there's a but here. <laughs> oh, man, so much to say. Uh, uh, the race issue is, of course, a very, very important one. Here. And I definitely think that you're right when you say Europe is starting to look more like the United States, I mean, certainly France. Um, you have clear, uh, the big word they like to use is exclusion, excluded from the world of work, excluded from the world of a, of a, good, of a good home, of the possibility to participate in consumerism and the like. Uh, the France example is a very, very clear one. And the, when, when, I, when I read um, contemporary works, um, studying sociological and historical works of the French manufacturing working class, they, it, it's totally uh, bound up with the question of, of immigrants. Um, well, there's, there, there's no doubt that they're going to start looking a lot more like us in that sense. Um, Class is uh, class and race is very is very close. Class organizations in the United States have often been very exclusionary to women and to uh, racial and ethnic minorities, but they've also been the sites of some of the greatest integration as well. I live in Milwaukee, and it's one of them. Depending on how you measure it, it might be the second most racially segregated city in the country. When I go to the Labor Day parade that ends at the summer fest grounds that some of you are familiar with, you see how in, that the most integrated uh, area of, of US social life is our trade unions. Um, yeah. These are very, very multi-colored, multicultural um, uh, organizations. You see it in Labor Day parades, and you see it there. 